Welcome to the first concept corner, where I sit in a corner and tell you all about a concept I created. I'm the Helixian, and today we are looking at a world concept I call Anthro World. Before I begin, I want to explain what this show is. I love, so I love creating world building and character ideas and all manner of like creative conceptual stuff. I'm just always thinking of characters, ideas, powers, how could this work? I, uh, every night to fall asleep, I've always just created stories and like laid out houses in my head, just creating all the aspects of these cool worlds and stuff. But the problem is I, I love writing, but I'm not good at it. Um, I have a really hard time creating storylines and, you know, I never finish anything I start and I enjoy my time while I do it, but I really enjoy, enjoy spending my time creating the background and the story and the concepts and the world and the economics and the history and the you know social and how just everything works or like the minutia and details and when it comes around to actually writing a storyline I really don't have any interest in I'm not really creative in that way I'm not really good at um creating a story excuse me so um I figured in order to you know produce something with all this concept and um, to you know use all this stuff I've created in a finished product I would create this series just kind of putting some of my ideas out there um, so yeah uh, so for this first episode we'll be um, I'll be describing a world concept I developed a few months ago um, I call it anthro world, but the word anthro should probably be replaced with a more creative word if it were to actually be crafted into a story. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, so, the kind of core concept of the anthro world is that there's not people. Instead, the dominant life forms and intelligent ones are um, the anthros. Um, and for every species of regular animal on the planet, and maybe plants, hmm, um, there is one sentient anthropomorphized anthro. Um, they're born into the world out of birthing pits, and when one dies, its descendant is immediately born from that same spe the that species um, origin pit. Um, these pits are often shared by similar species, um, such as like the bull shark and the great white shark, might come from the same pit in the ocean and once they're born they take a few years to grow to maturity I kind of picture them being born at kind of the state of a older toddler to you know young kid so they're you know more or less potty trained and they can walk and everything like that more or less out of the pit but in terms of emotional and knowledge and growth and stuff they are kids often the uh, similar species that all kind of come from the same pit will form uh cities and communities around this pit and usually they'll develop kind of closer bonds especially if it's a lot of species that are similar will kind of almost build families so there's a bunch of different types of uh, uh was a shrimp they all kind of create the shrimp community of each one of the species um and then as far as the economics of the world goes, when a anthro dies, their finances and assets and debt and stuff transfer to the new descendant. Um, I'd imagine there's some laws that would be like for the first couple of years of that descendant's life, like certain things are, you know, postponed. Um, but knowing that a descendant will be born into a world um, without parents, Anthros have kind of created several systems to help better, you know, start off the life of their descendants. For like richer species, they will often kind of prepay for a nanny system so that there's people kind of re to raise their descendant. For other species who have large families of related species, um, often that group will raise the new descendant much like, you know, human families do. Though sometimes an anthro might not care about the well-bearing of their descendant and just spend all their money on them and their lives. 
and then leave the descendant without anything once they're born. So often the governmental bodies of the world will set up programs in order to help raise these descendants who are born without a pre-set up support system. Um, to zoom out in a macro view of the world, uh, species often group and stay around their birth pit so that it's an easy transition for their, their descendant. Long distance travel is seen as kind of risky and living far away from your birth pit is very rare. Um, conflicts between communities can be very brutal because the birth pits are so valuable because that's where they're all going to be coming back to. So, you know, you really got to protect those birth pits. And a lot of some communities like see them as sacred and holy and it's very um, critical and it's risky to go to war because, you know, you're so far away from your birth pit that usually you would have a lot of setup and preparations before soldiers would go off. Um, also, in this world, regular animals exist in the world just the same way, way they do in our world. Um, there's farming, there's hunting, but there are a lot of taboos about him, how anthros treat the species they represent. And um, some even worship their species or keep them sacred. And there are definitely conflicts between different communities who see, you know, that other species or that other anthros species is not really important. So the wolves might just see the species of sheep as whatever, but the sheep anthros could really be, you know, warm, protective against the wolves. And who knows? Uh, maybe you do. Feel free to use this world and the aspects I've kind of mentioned as inspiration for maybe your own story or your own world. And if you want to share it, I started a subreddit at R the Helixian for you to share in that or share ideas and I'd love to see what other people what people have created. Um, but regardless, thank you for watching. If you uh, care to like, comment, and subscribe, it'd be much appreciated. Don't have to, but it helps the channel grow and I really love making this content and I'm glad that people are watching it. But um, that said, I'll see you in another video. Thank you. Bye.